Yo, what's up guys? My name is Severman and welcome back to another video on my channel. So in today's video, I will show you how to process vocals with FL Studio stock plugins only. So let's get straight into the FLP. So this one's the FLP of an upcoming song of mine and this one will actually be released in two weeks. But yeah, let's actually play the song. So I'll play um, the build up part because that's where we have like eight bars of um, the chorus of the vocals, which is the, the most important part. So um, yeah, let's check this out. Yeah, so this is pretty much the finished already processed vocal that you've just heard and as you can tell by the naming it's called vocals wet so we actually did the processing in a separate project file so let me switch the files real quick so let's go all right so this is the actual project file where we did the processing for the vocals and as you can see here we have more than just one layer so the first thing that i recommend to do is when it comes to vocal processing is to pitch correct them and the way i do that is by using the new tone plugin which is also an fl studio stock plugin so you basically just want to drag in your vocal in here and what it does is basically chops up or it doesn't chop up but it shows you the pitch of all the individual words and tones or whatever i don't know and the cool thing in here is you can really change the pitch of every single bit of your vocal so the way i would do this is i would just listen to the vocal and if there is a word that really falls off like that's really noticeably off pitch you can just drag yeah that that word to to the right note what you can also do is to just um, select all words by pressing uh, command or um, control A and you just double right click on one word and then it will really center all of the notes. I wouldn't recommend doing that because this can make it sound a bit too unnatural I feel like because you never have all of the notes really 100% in the right pitch if that makes sense. So I would rather do it by just listening to the vocal and if you feel like there is a word that's not 100% on the right note, I would just drag that note down or up a bit to, to really make it sound nice and, and good. So um, yeah, that's already pretty much it with like the pitch correction. There's nothing crazy. I'm not a big fan of using autotune to be honest because I feel like it makes the vocal sound too unnatural and I'm not a fan of, of that auto-tune sound to be honest I just don't like to use it so I just do the pitch correction manually I feel like this still sounds most natural at the end so um, yeah that's pretty much it with the, the pitch correction and then I would actually head over to the actual processing or the the vocal um, effect chain so I have um, this bus channel where I have all my effects so as you can see I, I just used fruity native plugins so you don't need to have any expensive third-party plugins you can really um, have professional sounding vocals which is using uh, yeah native plugins from FS Studio. so the first thing that i always do is i select an eq and i low and high cut it so what i did here is i set the uh, low cut to 200 hertz and you don't want to be cutting too much away of the vocals like you don't want to actually cut away of the actual sound from the vocal so this one is really just to um, get rid of any mic rumble of, or to get rid of any like low um, noise in the background. And you don't want to, you know, remove any body from the vocals. This is really just to get rid of anything that's not supposed to be in the recording. So next up I have the compressor as you can see. And this is where we basically make sure that there's no low rumble in there that um, affects our compressor. Because we don't want that. We only want to have the actual vocal affecting any effects that come after the, the EQ or the compressor now. So um, yeah, let's talk about the compressor. So um, in general, the compression is, I would say, the most important um, effect on a vocal bus because um, naturally the words sung won't be on one even um, loudness level. So if you don't have compression on your vocals and you're trying to mix it, it would be pretty much impossible because you have words in there where you think, oh, this is really loud, so you basically uh, turn down the fader and then at other parts you think yeah but here it's it's too quiet and you raise it again then you think yeah but uh, it's, it's too loud again and then you're just stuck 
changing the volume of your of your vocal. So compression is really key to um, have your vocal sit nicely in, in your song. So I basically went for an 8 to 1 ratio, which is already quite intense, actually. Then the threshold is set to minus 18 decibels. So this will basically select when the compressor starts working, like at what volume. So if the threshold is set very low, it will do a lot. If the threshold is set very high, it won't um, do a lot, basically. And the level you set depends on how much gain there is, like how loud the vocal is going into the compressor. So you just have to yeah, check that. And I just have it, yeah, again, as I said, uh, set to minus 18 here in this case. And then what I did, I um, turned down the attack all the way because I do have quite a lot of compression going on here in this track to really have the vocals up front in the mix. And uh, with setting the attack down to zero decibels, I basically get rid of any harsh transients that were in there. And um, yeah, now I have to release set to uh, 250. I think that uh, gave it some, yeah, a natural kind of sounding compression, if that makes sense. Like you just have to mess around with the settings and just see how it sounds, to be honest. It's just about using your ears always. And then with the gain, I turned that one up again because um, what compression does is it will actually turn down the loudest parts. And then with the gain, I just boosted the uh, signal again. So that it, it doesn't uh, lose too much volume. Then the third plugin that I have on the bus channel is this equalizer here. And this one is doing more um, like precise stuff. So with this one, I'm actually shaping the sound. So for instance, the most important thing in this one is this dip that I have here at 490 hertz, you can say. So if you're recording vocals and you're not in an ideal environment, meaning you're not in a 100% perfectly treated a studio, which probably will be the case. There will always be some room resonances in your recording, and that means there will be frequencies that are a bit more pronounced than others. And I thought this one here was just too loud, so I just reduced it a tiny bit to, to get a more balanced sound with the vocals. And then I just boosted the high end a bit to um, just have some more air and to kind of make the vocals pop in the mix. You know, it's always about finding that sweet spot. You don't want to have too little high end because then it will sound like the vocals were sung into a pillow or something. Um, if you have too much high end, it can appear too harsh and that might also overpronounce the S sounds. And this is also what I took care with um, this plugin right here with the multiband compressor. Um, I took care of the S sounds basically and the, the how do you call it? like the S, F sounds, those harsh sounds in your vocal. Yeah, how I use this one is I just bypass the low and mid band because I only want to affect the high band because this is basically where those S sounds um, are in. So what I then do is I select the uh, frequencies with those two knobs right here. So I can basically select what the high band is actually affecting, like which frequencies. So I have these set to like 5k hertz, you can say. Then I have this ratio set to 16 to 1. So this is also very intense because I really wanted to sure that once the uh, signal hits the threshold, I really wanted to push down those um, yeah, harsh sounds. And then with the threshold again, you just have to listen how how much the compressor is working. So with this one, you can actually see how much it's doing. If you'll take a look at this one right here. Give you all I have, got scars. Can't forget you, yeah, you made your mark. So whenever there is this harsh sounds, you can see it's basically I'm um, going up. Like there's like this red thing that tells you, okay, now I'm working. That's what the compressor is telling you. And you can see like if, if it's going up really high, there's probably too much going on. If you don't see going up at all, there's no compression happening. So you just again have to find that sweet spot. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it about the multiband compression. And the um, yeah, it's basically a de So yeah, I just used the multiband compression as a de -esser. Then we have some more EQing. So here I felt like there were still some harsh sounds in the high end. So I actually reduced it a bit again. And I also reduced the low mids a tiny bit by what is it like? Uh, half a dB. Then we have another EQ and here again I reduced the low mids a bit, some more actually, and then I just boosted the 1k hertz a bit. It's always about referencing to other songs and then you can tell what frequencies are too, too uh, harsh in your vocal or, or what your vocal is missing. So uh, this always is, is pretty good referencing to other songs. Then we have the P controller and the reverb. So I'm, I'm sure you know how to set that one up because I show that in like almost every video. Give you all I have got scars. 
So with the settings here, I have the decay set to 1.8 seconds, low cut, 800 hertz, high cut, 10k hertz, and then I boosted the damping a bit. This also gives some more like high end to, to the reverb and also helps to give it some more air kind of, I would say. Then we have another P controller and I use this one with uh, delay. So also helps to just fatten up the vocal a bit because I have it set to ping pong. So it's basically on one um, speaker and then on the other one. So it's basically, you know, switching those two and also helps to just make the vocal a bit more interesting to be honest. And then that's actually pretty much already it with the vocal chain here. Since you're watching this tutorial right now, I guess you're trying to improve your music production skills and a website that I can recommend to deepen certain skills in general is Skillshare, which is the sponsor for today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. It offers over 25,000 inspiring classes on topics including music production, marketing, graphic design, photography and many more. No matter if you're a beginner, a pro or a master, Skillshare has classes to fit your specific skill level. As a music producer, you also need to know how to promote your music and how to brand yourself as an artist. And that's why just a few days ago, I took this class called Do Things, Tell People the Power of Personal Branding by Hamza Khan. This class was super inspiring because it's not only about marketing and branding itself, but what Hamza does in this masterclass is he gives you a concept on how you can achieve your life goals. And if you don't even know your life goals yet, he also gives you a concept on how you can find those out and how you can find your passion. So I can 100% recommend this class to you guys. It's super inspiring, but it's still very informative. So for the sponsorship, Skillshare and I have teamed up to provide you guys with a free trial of Skillshare. So the first 1000 people to click the first link in the description will get a one month free premium trial of Skillshare. So check it out. So let's take a look again at these individual layers that we have right here. So we initially just had that one um, layer by the singer. Um, it's actually Anna Marie Rosanio on this track again. She also sang on Made It. So we only got that one lead vocal and we wanted to have some harmonies in the chorus to fatten up the vocals some more. And this is a quick trick that I want to show you how you can create harmonies if you don't have any already by, by the singer or if you're using a sample pack, if there are no harmonies. This is a great way to um, yeah create harmony. So let's check that out real quick. So also for this, I use the uh, new tone. So again, you just want to drag in your vocal in here. And what you're going to want to do now is to change the entire pitch of your vocal. Of course, you can also do that with the pitch knob in, in the sampler. But if you do that, some notes won't really fit. So what you can do is you just select um, all of the vocals again it's by pressing uh, Command A or uh, Control A. So this first word right here is correct, but then these are off, so you can uh, change these again. I think I put these guys here as well to that note. And this is already a really cool harmony. So you get the idea, you just need to do that with the rest of the vocal as well. And then you just you know, drag in your vocal again into um, your project file. So we have um, created two artificial harmonies in here. So this is the, the first harmony, which is sitting quite high. So these are two exact um, files. What I just did is that I panned one to the right, one to the left, and then I just shifted them a bit. So one is a bit playing in front of the grid and then the other one is delayed back a bit. So this creates some nice stereo width because you don't want to have your harmonies sitting in the middle as well as your leads because that will just um, make no sense really because yeah, you already have the leads in the middle usually. And then when you put the harmonies on the sides, you just create a wider sound and you can separate them really nicely. And then we created the second harmony. And again, here the two files are exactly the same. Just one is panned to the left, one to the right, and I just shifted a bit. So um, yeah, these five layers you can say, or yeah, it's actually just three, create this really nice um, full chorus sound. Can't forget you, yeah, you made your mark. 
Yeah, actually, one thing that I forgot is you can also go in and uh, manually create volume automations in your vocal. This is also something that I actually recommend to do at the beginning before actually compressing the, the vocal. And this is also what I did here with, with this one. So for instance, here I felt like that breath in here was too uh, loud. So I just lowered the volume here to, to uh, just have it more in the background. Bad scars can't f Bad scars can't f this makes it a bit yeah, quieter. Yeah, but I think that's pretty much it with this vocal um, processing tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you did so. Comment with your feedback, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.